Company, march! This was in Oliver Cromwell's time. Colonel Mayfair was the youngest officer of his rank in the armies of the Commonwealth. But young as he was, he was a veteran soldier and tanned and war-worn. He had won his high place in the service and in the admiration of his men by valor in the field. But now he was in deep trouble. A shadow had fallen over his fortunes. The Death Disc by Mark Twain. Winter evening was come. Outside, storm and darkness. Within, a melancholy silence. For the colonel had read the evening chapter and prayed the evening prayer. And there was nothing now to do but sit, wait, and think. He would not have to wait long. He knew that and shuddered at the thought. They had but one child, Abby, seven years old. She would be coming presently for the goodnight kiss. Let me seem happy now for her sake. And forget for the time. What is to come, saying, thy will be done. I can say it with all my soul and all of my mind. What that I can say it with my heart. Father, my papa, you must have kissed me like that. You rumple my hair. I'm so sorry, dear. You do forgive me? Why, of course. Papa, please don't cry. Papa will do anything Abby says he must. A story, a story. A story, is it a, a gay one? No, Papa, a dreadful one. <laughs> Papa would rather shift to the gay kind, but as per agreement, Abby is to have whatever she commands. Papa, we mustn't always have gay times. Nurse says people don't always have gay times. She says so. Is that true? It is true. Troubles have to come. Then tell a story about one. A dreadful one, so we'll shiver and feel just like it was us. Well, once there were three colonels. Oh, goody, I know colonels. It's because you're one, and I know the suits they wear. Go on, Papa. And in battle, they committed breach of discipline. Is that something good to eat? No, uh, quite another matter, dear. They overstepped their orders. Is that something? No, it's as uneatable as the other. <laughs> they were commanded to attack a strong position in a losing battle in order to turn the enemy about and give the Commonwealth forces a chance to retreat and regroup. But in enthusiasm, they overstepped their orders for the turn of their faint into a fact, carried the position by storm, winning the battle and the day. The Lord General was very displeased with their disobedience, praised them highly, and then sent them to London to be tried for their lives. Was it the great General Cromwell, Papa? Yes. Oh, I know him. I've seen him when he went by our house. So big on his great big horse, with his soldiers, and you can tell that people were afraid of him, but I wasn't afraid of him because he didn't look like that at me. Go on, Papa. Well, they were taken prison, prisoners to London and set upon their honor and allowed to go see their families. They arrived this morning. <gasps> it's a true story? Yes. Oh, goody, ever so much better going to where they lived happily ever after. Before they allowed to go home, they were taken to the tower. Oh, I know the tower. You can see it from here. Go on. In, in the tower, the military court tried them for an hour, found them guilty, and condemned them to be shot. Killed, Papa? Yes. How naughty. Papa, you're not going fast enough. You need to hurry. I, I know I don't. I suppose it's because I stop so much to reflect. Well, you mustn't. You must go right on. <laughs> Very well. The three colonels... Do you know them, Papa? Yes. Oh, I wish I did. I love colonels. Do you think they would let me kiss them? <laughs> One of them would. I think they would, Papa. For I would say, my Papa's a colonel too, and brave, and he would have done what you did. So you needn't be the least bit ashamed. Go on, Papa. Then the military court went to the Lord General and said, they have done the duty. <clears throat> And now they begged that two of the generals, two of the colonels might be spared, and only one of them shot. 
the Lord General said, they should cast lots, that shall decide it. Two of them will live. And did they, Baba? Did they? No, they refused. They wouldn't do it? No. Why? They said the one that got the fatal beam would be sentencing himself to death by his own voluntary act, and it would be suicide, call it by what name one might. They said they were Christians, and the Bible forbade them to take their own life. They said they were ready with the court's sentence be carried into effect. What does that mean, Papa? They will all be shot. Huck! rumble dum dum rumble dum dum Open in the Lord General's name. Oh goody, Papa, it's the soldiers! To the tower. Forward. Lord General, we have implored them, but they persist. They will not cast lots. They are willing to die, but not defile their religion. They shall not all die. The lots shall be cast for them. Send for the prisoners and put them in that room, with their faces to the wall, side by side, and their hands crossed behind their backs. Give me notice when they have arrived. Go and find me the first little child that passes by. Oh, I know you, sir. You're the little General Cromwell. I've seen you when you went by my house. I had on my red frock, the one with the blue things down the front. Don't you remember that? Well, um, let me see. I, uh... I was standing by the house. My house, you know. Well, you dear little thing. I ought to be ashamed, but, you know... No, you don't remember. Why, I didn't forget you. No, I am ashamed. But I shall never forget you again, dear. You'll forgive me now, won't you? And we'll, we'll be good friends. Yes, I will, but I don't see how you came to forget it. You must be very forgetful. <laughs> but I am too, sometimes. For I think you mean to do good and to be right, so I'll forgive you without much trouble. You remind me of my own little girl. Not little anymore. She had your same charm, your all-conquering sweet confidence and friend and stranger alike. She used to lie in my arms and charm the care out of my heart and we were friends and equals, and play fellows together. Long ago it was since that bright heaven faded and vanished. But you have brought it back. Take a burdened man's thanks for it. Did you love her very, very, very much? Ah, you shall judge by this. She commanded, and I obeyed. I think you're lovely. Would you kiss me? Thankfully, and hold it a privilege too. You made it a request, but you could have made it a command. For you are standing in her place now. And what you command, I must obey. Soldiers, Lord General! Abby wants to see them! You shall, dear. First, I have a commission for you. They have come, sir. Three small sealing discs of wax. Two white, one of ruby red. This one's mission is to deliver death to the colonel who should get it. What a lovely red one! Are they for me? No, dear, they are for others. Lift the corner of that curtain there. Behind it you will find three men, each with their hand open like a cup. Into each hand, place one of those things, and then return to me. One of them is my papa. I shall give him the prettiest one. Look, papa, look what you've got. I gave it to you. It grieves me, sir, but my duty commands. Commands what? I must take him away. Take him away? Where? to another part of the fortress. Indeed you can't. Mama is sick and I'm going to take him home. Come along, Papa. Abby's ready. My poor child. I can't. I must go with them. Indeed you can't. Mama is sick. Let him go. You must. What the God I could, child. Jen, Jen, God. Father, sure. Stop them, sir. Mama is sick and I told them so and they're taking him away and they never even listened to me. Your papa, child? Is he your papa? Why, of course. Why would I give the pretty red one to any other when I love him so? I have done the cruelest thing that ever man did. And there's no help, no help. What can I do? Tell him to let him go. Tell him to do it. You told me to command, and now the first time I tell you to do something, you don't do it. God be thanked for the saving accident of that unthinking promise. 
and for you, inspired by him, to remind me of my forgotten pledge. Officer, obey her command. She speaks by my voice. The prisoner is pardoned. Set him free. <laughs> 